Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another episode of OSDIA Live. I am Lisa Marie Latino, zooming in from New Jersey. Joining me is Mary Kovach from Cleveland. We have Justin Smith from Washington, D.C., and I'm so excited to have one of my fellow Jersey girls, Italian girls, media girls on with me today, <laughs> Cara DeFalco. Cara, how are you? Hi, Lisa Marie. Hi, Mary and Justin. I'm great. Thank you guys so much for having me. I so appreciate this. Well, we are so happy to have you on. And, you know, when we were kicking around ideas about who to have next on the show, I'm like, got to have Kara on because she is the quintessential new age Italian American girl with everything that you are doing with Kara's Cucina and your Italy trips and just, you know, you're really bringing that Italian flavor to the mainstream. And I so appreciate that. Thank you so much. So I had met you a few years ago after you were wrapping up your career on Morning News, actually Morning yeah. News here locally in New Jersey. And you parlayed that career into chasing your passion in life. Talk to us about the beginnings of Kara's Cucina, what your former life was and where you are now. Yeah, so, so I was the morning traffic reporter for News 12 New Jersey for five and a half years. Um, and I, I love being on air. I love being on camera um, and just being able to, to entertain and inform people. Um, so kind of took that and shifted. And then I was always, I always cooked it, you know, typical Italian American girl. Uh, I was so blessed. Both my grandmothers were alive and well uh, into my teen years. I had a great grandmother alive and well, um, actually into my 20s. She, she outlived one of my grandmothers and, um, and, and my mom and my aunt, and, and they all could cook. And, and so I just always grew up in a kitchen watching people cook. You know, my, my mom made dinner six nights a week for us. We always sat down around the family table. So it was just um, very normal for me. And then um, when I left News 12, uh, I had, uh, I actually was gonna be teaching at a cooking school uh, and that didn't work out, but we had already started the YouTube channel as kind of a hobby thing. And it was just one of those moments where we said, you know what, let's just take this opportunity. Let's go all in um, and let's really put this show out there and show that, you know, um, we can do, you know, bring people back to the kitchen. Um, we can do it in a, in a broadcast quality manner, um, but we can make it fast and easy for the internet so people can kind of consume it in small bites and, um, and hopefully make it accessible to people where, um, and I'm so honored when people say this to me that they say, oh, you know, your show makes it look so easy. I feel like I can tackle this. So that's always something that we're really honored to, to um, hear back because that's really our goal. Mary, you have, I know you have lots of questions for Kara. I do. So first, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, first thing I'd like to ask, what is your favorite homemade summertime beverage? Um, I think for us, it's really sangria, which is actually, we're going to be sharing our sangria recipes coming up um, this month in July on the show. Uh, so my aunt does a white sangria. My dad does a red, red sangria. So we're going to be doing the both. I really like the white sangria. Um, especially in the summertime when it's hot, you know, I, I, I find a red wine, uh, even a red sangria to be a little too heavy, but um, the, the white one is just really light, really um, fruity and delicious, and it just goes well with so many um, light summer dishes also. So that's going to be something that we actually have coming up, and that's my favorite. Okay, that's, that's great. So I want to go back to the production of your show. I, I mean, I knew this, but you were telling the crew <laughs> behind the scenes uh, leading into this interview how you are the first and only Emmy-nominated YouTube series. Yes. Yes, we are. Yeah, we're really proud of that. Um, and again, coming from broadcast, and my husband, um, who shoots and edits the show, uh, is also in, in a professional broadcaster. He actually already has two Emmys, uh, you know, under his own belt. Um, and then I really just, you know, I knew that we did a good job and, and I knew that the show was quality and I submitted the work. And uh, in 2018, we got a nomination and it was just incredible. You know, we really looked at each other and we were up against, you know, NBC and, and New York One and like these big powerhouse names in the city. And it was like, that's me and you in our kitchen, you know, in that same list. And, and it was just such a, um, so exciting and such an honor. Um, we were really, really proud of ourselves uh, for doing that. And then when I looked into it, I, you know, I think a lot of people say, you know, oh, I didn't realize YouTube could be nominated. And, you know, it is, it's the modern world now. So there's a lot, um, you know, people are really starting to look at the internet as a viable, um, 
form of content, especially these days with everything going on now. Um, so you can, so you can, yeah, but we've, we've looked into it and I've reached out to YouTube several times and they have not corrected me yet. So yes, to my knowledge, we are the only Emmy nominated channel on the entire platform. I'll definitely take that and run with it. Take it and run. <laughs> exactly. So besides your cooking, I know that you took your love of food and, and everything Italian out of the kitchen and you started doing trips to Italy. I know that unfortunately COVID-19 interrupted your plans for this year so far, but tell us about the trips and what people can expect if they sign up. So we do, yes, yeah, so we did our first one in 2018. Um, we did a little reorganizing through 2019 and we had a trip planned for this past April and it has been postponed. Um, fingers crossed for October, but we'll see. It might, might be postponed yet again. Um, but the concept of the trip is that we take people to Italy and to really showcase, um, I think for a lot of Americans, especially, you know, we have Italian American culture and food and it's really developed um, into its own animal. Um, but in Italy, the cuisine is very regional. So people don't realize, you know, this dish comes from Tuscany. This dish comes from Campania. This dish comes from Abruzzo. So I really go, we go to one region of Italy and we learn about the cuisine there. So you will see the sites. Um, so when we did Tuscany, you know, we saw Pisa, uh, we saw San Luca, uh, Luca, we saw San Gimiano, uh, we saw Florence. But at the same time, we learned about, you know, why Tuscan bread is different than bread around Italy. There's no salt in it. So it's a very, very plain flavor. Uh, we learned about Tuscan olive oils. We visited an olive oil farm. We took cooking classes, uh, both in Florence and at our hotel from, you know, Michelin star chef and uh, learn to make pasta, learn to make uh, local pizza. And so you really get that hands-on experience. You learn about the cuisine, you see the sites. So we really kind of tell the story of the region through their food. Is there a particular region that you like to channel in your cooking or that you liked visiting? Um, I mean, I'm always, I'm just head over heels in love with Italy in general, but um, my, my family's from Abruzzo. Um, so I, I love them and I'm really excited to, um, we're going to be putting together the Abruzzo trip, uh, hopefully soon. And, um, that's going to be a really unique one cause there's, um, it barely does have a distinct cuisine. Um, but I will admit that the part of Italy that I'm probably most in love with is Campania, which is the, the upcoming trip. So that's, um, that Naples, Sorrento, Pompeii. Um, and I just love it cause it's got that. I, yeah, I love all the ancient, um, ruins that are just kind of scattered throughout the area certainly you know you can go to a city someplace like Pompeii and see the whole thing um but they're just they're they're dotted everywhere and just that coastline of the mountains that just collapsed into the sea is so beautiful and then lemons and that's kind of why the the lemon on my logo um I'll just never forget visiting that region for the first time and you know the lemons are the size of a football it's I've never saw a piece of fruit like that in my life um and it was just uh, there was just so much love and passion there they're so fired up about everything every day um, and so that was just really where I really, really fell in love with Italy and, and food in that whole region. So that's probably the one that's really uh, has me, has my attention. Oh. Well, I pray that you can do that trip in October because the whole world would be in a much better place. If that trip <laughs> exactly. Happen, right? <laughs> Justin, I know that we have questions from our Facebook audience. Absolutely. They're coming in and um, to kind of build off what you're talking about, Mark Denuncia wrote in. Um, where in Abruzzo is your family from and have you ever been back to visit? I have, yes. So um, thankfully the internet makes the world a smaller place. So through Facebook and WhatsApp, um, I'm so blessed to be very close with my cousins in Abruzzo. They are in Chieti. Um, uh, so again, right near uh, the ocean on the Adriatic Sea, but it's up in the mountains, but I, it's literally a 20 minute drive. Um, and then you can be in Pascara, Franca Villa Mare, um, and, and they do have a couple of... Um, little beach condos in that area and it's beautiful i mean it's it's a hill town we went for we went for a walk and it was like this and I, <laughs> <laughs> you know i was exhausted by the time we got to the cafe but um <laughs> it's it's a beautiful beautiful region and um food wise probably my favorite thing is um arrosticini which is actually roasted goat meat and nobody freak I, I was a little freaked out myself it's really really good <laughs> it's on a skewer and you just eat it and like they have it you get it in like a big bin, you order however many skewers you want and like a pizza and that's dinner and it's so much fun. Hey, when you went to Italy, did you try horse? I have not, that's a Sicilian thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I have not, I've not yet been to Sicily but it's definitely on my bucket list and, and I, 
I go back and forth on like whether or not I would do it. Um, I think I would probably give it a taste, you know, if it's, if it's part of the cuisine and the culture there, I, I like to at least be open to those things. But you know, it's one of those things you have to wrap your head around. I know. Well, when I was in Sicily, I did try it. I, it was a little weird because, you know, there's like horse heads, like, over, um, or like, you know, neon signs, like to yeah. tell you that, that horse meat is available here. It actually was good. And I hate to admit it. I mean, I don't, I, mean, I wouldn't have it every day, but I've heard, I've heard it's good. It's like really lean and it has a really good taste and they made it kind of like a cheesesteak sandwich. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, but again, it's something that you have to wrap your head around. I mean, it's a horse, but, and Sicily, I highly recommend that because I, I think it's so gorgeous there and it's not really like known as like a touristy place. Like, oh, I'm dying to go to Sicily. You know, it's not the first place that comes to mind, but it's so beautiful, so romantic and the food is excellent. Yeah, it's definitely, our, our goal is to actually expand the trip, you know, and again, coronavirus really kind of threw a wrench and everything, but our goal is to expand the, expand the trip to two a year. So that we'll have a spring and a fall trip every year. Um, and I really do, I want to hit all the regions of Italy um, and then, you know, be kind of be able to cycle back so that if you, you know, if you miss the Tuscany trip, we'll be going back at some point. If you miss the Campania trip, we'll be going back at some point. So that um, just to really open it up to people and give them the opportunity to, to see those places, to taste the cuisine and learn the culture that way. Yeah, Justin, I know we have some other questions related to media. Uh, yeah, absolutely. First, I want to just point out that uh, Virginia Nuara wrote that you haven't seen Italy until you've seen La Bella Sicilia. So, <laughs> so I think she uh, she'd be your number one fan to get on get it on the list. I'll, um, I'll get it on the list. <laughs> <laughs> but absolutely, we had a question. Um, how did COVID affect your you know the production at all? Um, you know you. Thankfully for me, um, it, it, the production of the show is the one thing that was not impacted, and that's because it's just a family affair. So it's my husband and I. We shoot at my parents' house. Um, for the first month, we did actually switch things up and shoot in our very tiny apartment, which is a little more of a difficulty, but, um, you know, we got it done. Um, and as things, we, you know, everybody started to kind of get into the new normal, um, we went back to my parents' house, and we just locked my parents in their bedroom. We were like, stay away from us. You know, we're going to wipe everything down before we leave. Um, and then most recently, my mom was back in the kitchen helping me with stuff. She does, um, helps me with a lot of prep work. She helps me clean up after in between each episode. Um, so the production was actually the one thing that was not impacted. We also do, um, I do hands-on cooking classes. I do a kid's summer cooking camp and the culinary tour of Italy that we were talking about. All of those things were the things that just came to a screeching halt for me. So that was really the area where it most impacted my business. Yeah, yeah. Anything else, Justin? That's it for now from the questions. All right, keep them coming in. Mary, let's go back to you. I know you have more. Well, we were just talking about unique ingredients, if you will. Um, I'm wondering if you have a favorite. That a you favorite always unique ingredient? Um, I don't think I necessarily, I, I have things that I'll eat that most people are like, you know, rabbit is probably one of my favorite dishes that just speaking of, you know, slightly weird meats. Um, and I, I had that the, for the first time when I studied abroad in Italy. Um, I just remember that I was like, this is the best piece of chicken I ever had. And my friends were like, that's definitely a rabbit. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, but it was, it's really good. And, and if I ever do see it on menus here, um, I certainly enjoy it. Uh, but I try to leave the more, uh, exotic things to the professionals <laughs> in a way um and again just because i really want people to feel like cooking is something that's accessible to them so on the show and even for myself um you know we kind of stick with the basics so but i i, I joke my big joke is actually I, i'm a went to catholic school my whole life uh and my principal in high school always used to start every assembly every meeting you know the father son holy spirit okay so every time i start to cook and i go olive oil onions garlic salt <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Kara, what are your plans? So, you're actually not in New Jersey right now. I am not. No, we foolishly, <laughs> we didn't realize that when we started. Um, and we decided to take a little road trip uh, down the East Coast to the U.S. So, um, we did go to Florida. I'm in South Carolina right now. Um, but we stayed in homes. We are very lucky. We have family uh, in all of these places. So, we drove our own car. We stayed in private homes. Um, we really stayed home. It was really just to change the four walls. 
um, yeah. around us. And, and we are coming home early um, just because of everything that's going on. So, but yeah, so we're, we're on the road, but we did, we had a nice time and it's good to see family and friends. So we just wanted to kind of touch base with everybody. Yeah. Justin, you have another question from the Yeah, group? absolutely. We have one coming in. Um, so you mentioned that you studied abroad in Italy. Um, can you, where did you study abroad and can you tell us about that experience? Yeah, so I, I had the opportunity, um, so I went to Rutgers University and through them I had the opportunity to study at the University of Urbino, um, which is a little outside of Venice. Um, I, my mother put me on the plane and took my shoulders and went, you must come home, because she just, <laughs> she knew, she had like, I was going to fall in love with the country. She was afraid I was going to fall in love with an Italian man. And that was it. She would never see me again. Um, so, but I, I tell anybody, uh, any college student, any university student, if you have the opportunity, if your school offers a study abroad, anywhere in the world, really, take that opportunity because you will never travel and see the world like that ever again. So it was so wonderful. I mean, we stayed in the dorms at the university. Um, you know, we had a cafeteria experience, but then we also had little lunch cards where we could go to the cafeteria in town um, and get our breakfast or a little soda or something. Um, and then, you know, then we were free classes. There was four hours of class in the morning. We had lunch at the cafeteria and then they just let us loose on this city, you know, and it was fantastic. We, we went to the bars and the nightclubs and we went shopping. Um, we could plan little weekend excursions. That was how I saw Naples for the first time. Um, you know, we went to the Cinque Terre, we went out to Venice, we, we went all over the place and, and you just, you know, you get a student discount. Um, you know, most of everything's covered for you. So it, it was just phenomenal. And, and, and you have lifelong friends from ex an experience like that. That's so beautiful. Wonderful. I know on Facebook, Justin, I see something from Vince DiGregorio that's very funny. Why yes. Don't you, yes. Tell Kara to expand on that. Okay. So Vince DiGregorio writes in that he's from South Philly. His parents are from Campania. His dad is from Benevento. His mother is from Montella and they got married in Pompeii. Um, so he's been to Italy as an adult and always loved the authentic Italian food. Um, not Italian American food. So he was wondering if you could continue to educate people in America that other than eggplant, not everything is parmed. <laughs> <laughs> and that there's a there's a lot of different diversity in Italian cuisine. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's part of my goal. And it's funny, and I feel like um, the more I go to Italy and the more I learn about them and their cuisine and then their opinion of us <laughs> and ours, um, it's even more so important to, to explain it. And, I, and I, it's so funny that he mentioned the Parmigiana because I think like chicken parm is probably a super quintessential Italian American dish, but you have to understand, it tells such an amazing story. It tells the story of the Italian immigrant that came here, you know, for the majority of them after World War II, um, meat was scarce in Italy, it was, a, it was a luxury item, but here in the States, it was something that you could easily get. So I think for a lot of Italian Americans, almost as a way of showcasing that they were doing well here, you know, it was like, look, I can make my parmigiana with chicken. I don't have to use the eggplant. Um, you know, so it tells a different story and it, and it exists for a reason. You know, it's not that like we're just heathens and we thought, you know, oh, well, we'll parmigiana everything. No, you know, there, that was, you know, a success story, really. It was, you know, I can afford to, to do this. I can get this luxury item and, and make this, uh, you know, traditional dish with it versus, you know, the, the, traditional eggplant parmesan which i was told when i went to neighbor they were like why do you guys what the hell is a chicken parm and i was like hold on <laughs> it's got a story <laughs> well i made the mistake once when i was in rome for the first time um i put cheese on my linguine white clam sauce they literally took the dish away from me and gave me a new one because it was so sacrilege to do that. <laughs> yes, yeah. Cheese on fish is not a thing in Italy. So they, again, yes, they're very, they're very particular. I, even cheese on pasta, apparently, uh, one of my friends was explaining to me, it's like a north-south thing over there where some of them, you know, will really throw it on and others are like, no, you know, how it comes is how it should be. Um, actually, when I was studying abroad, my friend, um, we were out at a restaurant and there's, if you'll, if you're ever there, you'll notice there's not salt and pepper on the table at a restaurant like there is here. And just out of habit, she said, oh, you know, could I have some salt? Cause she was, she hadn't tasted her dish yet. Do you know the chef came out of the kitchen and looked at her and went, what's wrong with my food that you need to put salt? And she, she was so apologetic. You know, we just, it, it was just that American standard tradition of, oh, you know, salt your plate before you start eating. And it's like, no, how it comes is how you're supposed to eat it. 
Yeah, exactly. Well, Kara, this was so much fun. I know you have to hit the road. Um, yeah. But before we all do, I know that we have some information on how you watching can join Sons of Italy. So we want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, if you're interested in becoming a member, you can um, hit our website at osia.org and you can join a local lodge that's near you or you can join to become an ALM, which is basically an at-large member uh, with a virtual experience. Or you can follow us at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, or Pinterest. Awesome. Kara, safe travels. I'll talk to you when you're back in Jersey. Thank you. Thank you much, Lisa Marie. Thank you guys all for having me. I so appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. Yes. Mary, thank, Justin, you. thank you so much. And we'll see you back here next week for OSDIA Live.